have you got left to work? I should think I've got about 10 years left in the ambulance service. I've got about 20 years left in service. You OK? Yeah. I think I'll be working for the ambulance service about another 30 years. Well, I've got at least 40 years to go. These days, people are working a lot longer, so there's far more potential to develop wear and tear in the body as it ages. And this film is about you uh, helping to manage things for yourself through some very simple interventions, whether you're operational-based staff or based at a desk for a long time. It's specific to the ambulance service, with particular emphasis on activities involving lifting, driving, desk-based activities, and tips on how to help your body. All exercises can be performed in sitting or standing, and they can be performed at work, for example, in your break, or at home. We'll give you advice about back care and posture, together with some stretching and strengthening exercises. Hinge up the wall and back up again. So we'll come to the exercises in a bit, but first of all, how about a bit of myth busting? If I move, it's only going to make my back pain worse. Don't fear twisting and bending. Gradually increase what you're doing, but it's essential that you keep on the go. People do tend to worry when they've had an injury about moving, but there is strong evidence that movement is much better than bed rest. It's helpful for your recovery, but also to prevent recurrence, so keep on moving. When I've got a bad back, I really need to avoid exercise, especially weight training. Actually, back pain shouldn't stop you enjoying regular exercise or activity. In fact, studies have shown that continuing with regular exercise can actually help you get better quicker. And that may include the introduction of weights where appropriate. Exercise is generally considered to be the best form of treatment for lower back pain, whether your lower back pain is acute or chronic and no one exercise has been proven to be better or worse, so it's important that you do what you enjoy. So if I did hurt my back, surely a scan would show everything that's wrong? Sometimes it will, and sometimes it won't. Even people with no back issues will have changes in their spine. So seeing the result of a scan can cause a person to be concerned, change how they move, and give themselves more problems. Research shows that um, scans correlate poorly with lower back pain. It's also true that people who have no back pain will show changes on scans or x-ray results, but in fact have no symptoms. So scans are not always helpful or necessary. Sometimes they can make you more anxious. If I'm in pain, then I've definitely caused some damage. We used to believe that, uh, but recent research has changed our thinking. Physios work in a much more holistic way now, will help you understand your pain. The level of pain experienced is rarely proportional to the amount of injury to the back. Pain's much more complex than this. Your experience of pain can be influenced by many factors. For example, your past experiences or your beliefs your general health and well-being, your sleep patterns and also your exercise levels. Back pain is very common. Four in five out of us experience back pain at some point. Your back problem may cause hot, shooting, burning, stabbing sensations in your back, extending to one leg or even both legs. You may experience pins and needles. These symptoms are due to nerve pain. And often the causes can be unclear. It might be a simple muscle, tendon or ligament strain. Common causes can include lifting something awkwardly, staying in one position for too long, adopting a poor posture, lack of exercise leading to stiffening of the spine, or it may start for no obvious reason at all. It's important to remember that the spine is a really strong structure. And back pain is rarely a sign of serious disease or damage. In less than 1% of cases, it is a sign of a more serious problem. Most back pain will settle within six weeks, and typically an X-ray or an MRI won't be needed. OK, if I'm really concerned, when do I go and see my GP? If your pain is severe or escalating and is not responding to treatment. If you're experiencing agonising pain, causing anguish and despair or pain that might be like a band. Your pain's got a different character or sight to previous symptoms. Odd sensations or heavy legs. 
if lying flat on your back increases your pain or you have unsteadiness on your feet if you really can't sleep at night due to pain and finally if you have a history of cancer what if it's pain like I've never felt before what do I do then this will be a case of dialing 111 so that they can screen your symptoms for a case of corda equina syndrome these symptoms can include having difficulty controlling or passing urine. You may lose control of your bowels. Or you might have numbness around your back passage or genitals. You may have weakness in your legs or feel unsteady on your feet. In the ambulance service, you have to carry a lot of heavy things and you need to protect your back. One of the heavy items that you have is the response bag. And what we don't want you to do is to hike that over one shoulder. So Matt, if you could just bring the response bag out a little bit and if you could turn behind and pop your arms in and we're going to be using the power of your legs to stand forward. So if you can come and step forward, lovely. And if you can adjust both straps so there's not uneven loading and if you can wear it higher up the back, that will also protect your back. People in the ambulance service get in and out of ambulances all shift long and it's really important that you learn to do it correctly. This is typically the way that people get in and out. You may recognise it, but it's not correct. They place one foot on the step and using their hands, they pull themselves up into the cab on the steering wheel, like so. For those of you with long legs, there is one other incorrect way of doing this, and that is to place one leg directly into the footwell. And then again, using the steering wheel, pull yourself up into the cab. Place the left foot and then the right foot into the cab. Turn, pelvis on the seat and bring the feet across. Getting out of the ambulance can be a problem for hips, knees and back. Typically, somebody will place the hip out in the direction which they're going, but actually their spine is still twisted facing front in the cab. As they lower themselves out of the cab, they've only got one leg hitting the floor and there's repetitive stress on both knees. So the correct way to get out of the ambulance is to turn the direction you're going into. So twizzle your hips so the feet are placed squarely on the foot plate and then descend using the hips and thighs. Driving for the ambulance service means that we could be behind the steering wheel for quite a long period of time uh, during the day and during the night. So what I'd like to do today is just give you some advice and some tips on how to set your seat properly and the steering wheel to make sure that you're comfortable whilst driving at work. I'd like to start with the top of the seat and with the head restraint. When setting the head restraint, I'd like to make sure that the top third of my head is in the top third of the restraint. And this prevents risk of injury in the event of an accident and prevents whiplash. So the next thing I'd like to do is adjust the lumbar support. I can twist the spindle and this then pushes my lower back forwards so I'm not slouching or I can reduce it just to make sure I'm not too far back in the seat. The next spindle that on the seat, the bottom one, is to adjust the rake of the seat. And what I can do here is I can adjust the seat so I'm not too upright against the steering wheel. And if I bring it back a little bit, I can then have a more relaxed posture, but I've still got a good grip on the steering wheel. As I come down to the seat now, I've got the height adjuster on the seat, which some vehicles have. So I can pull the button upwards and I can lower myself down or bring myself back up. It is important that when you set the height of the seat, that your eyes are in the top third of the windscreen so you can see the hazards on the road clearly. The other button I have here can bring the seat backwards or forwards to help with the height adjuster. Once I'm happy with this, I can come down to the bottom of the seat and if I lift that handle up and pull it backwards, I can slide the seat backwards or forwards. Now, what I'm going to do is place my foot on the clutch pedal all the way down and make sure that I've got a nice bend in the knee so that then I'm comfortable at the wheel. I don't want to be too close to the dashboard so that my legs are catching or my knees catching the steering wheel. So once I've said that correctly, I'll then place my hands at 12 o'clock on the steering wheel and then bring them down to 10 to 2. And as I do, I'm checking that I've got a nice bend in the elbow. If I haven't, I can readjust any of these buttons to help me uh, correct that. Finally, to make sure that I'm sitting comfortably 
and I'm not too close to the steering wheel, we can adjust the steering column. There's a lever down the bottom of the steering column that I can pull upwards towards me and then I can adjust the steering column as necessary. I can push it away or I can pull towards me. But once I've set the steering column, I need to push that lever back down to lock it and then I can check my hands are safe again by going from 12 o'clock to 10 to 2 position and just making sure that I've got a nice bend in the elbow, making sure I'm nice and comfortable and reducing my risk of fatigue or in the event of an accident, I can ensure that I'm not too close to the airbag. So I've given you some general tips on driving posture, but it's really important that whilst driving in emergency conditions, we maintain a relaxed posture so we don't create our own fatigue. We can, in difficult situations and tense situations, tense up our shoulder blades or lean over the steering wheel when we really don't need to. Remember, whilst driving in emergency conditions, remain relaxed and remain calm. There are exercises that you can also do in your vehicle to help your back and your neck muscles. The first is active sitting, squeezing both glutes, pushing my lower back into the chair and from the sternum we lift your sternum, push the sternum against the seat belt so you're getting some extension in the upper back, the thorax. You can also do a neck stretch, so I'm going to stretch this side of my neck. I'm going to put this hand to anchor onto the seat and I'm going to put this hand on my head and then gently stretch. So the left hand is an anchor and then the right hand is gently guiding the head down to the side to get a lovely stretch all the way down here and you hold for a good 30 seconds. When you get engrossed in your work, it's easy to start sliding down in the seat and then you're not supporting your sacrum or your back, so that's to be avoided. Um, the opposite, it's easy to get engrossed in your work and be leaning forward with the shoulders forward and your neck craned. Yeah. It's also to be avoided. You want your feet firmly on the floor, um, so not hooked around the chair or anything like that. Um, they got like that yeah. or like that, yeah? yeah. Put extra load on your knee. Yeah. Okay, so there's some examples of some poor posture. So now I'm going to show Sid how to do it correctly. So the first thing we need to do is to look at the, um, the height. So I, I can see already that your feet are dangling a little bit. So yeah. that means you're, you tend to sit forward and your back's not supported. So if you can just pop your um, hands over to this side onto the yeah. lever that says lift. Perfect, lovely. Now I can see that your, um, your feet are now touching the floor, which is great. But if you come forward to the desk and pop your arms up for me, yeah. your arms are a little bit too high. Mm -hmm. So for you, you're going to need a foot rest. Okay. So if you can just come back a little bit and I'll get the foot rest for you. If you can come back and then if you can adjust the seat's height again and lift it up a little bit higher. Okay. Lovely, yes. So ideally, it pops just a little bit more. Oh, yeah? Yeah, just a little bit more. Okay, lovely. So that you have your uh, shoulders are relaxed, your elbows are at 90 degrees, mm -hmm. and your wrists are relaxed. So that's perfect. Also, I can see that you're, you're sitting away from the seat. So we need to adjust your armrests so they're at the right level. Yeah. So if you could use this button here and just press up, that's it, lovely. And then just relax your arms here, lovely. So you want your shoulders relaxed, yeah. your elbows at 90 degrees, and your arms straight onto the table, yeah. okay? So if you'd like to just adjust the other one and get that right. So the most important thing to remember is always make that adjustment. It's worth that investment at the beginning to protect your back. Yeah. If your job involves working at a fixed workstation, there are things that you can do to stay active in this position. So, walking forwards into the middle of the chair and with your feet placed firmly on the floor, hip width apart, and your hands resting on your thighs, keep your shoulders still. What I want you to do is to roll your pelvis back. Come back into neutral, sitting on the bones in your pelvis deep in your glutes and then rock forwards into what we call anterior tilt. And this can be a nice, slow, repetitive motion just to loosen off the back. So you might choose to do that two or three times in any one session. In that seated position, you're sitting in neutral now, you're going to tighten your glutes, 
and extend from the pelvis, drawing the chin over the shoulders. Again, if I show you sideways on. So if we now go into that neutral position, you can contract the glutes so that you're sitting tall, lift the sternum and allow the head to fall back into neutral. From that position, you can interlace the fingers, place them behind the head, keep the elbows in parallel and then open out the elbows which opens out the chest and then extend from the thoracic spine. For stretching the forearms, again you interlace the fingers, you turn the hands out away from you, extend the elbows and again sitting on tight glutes and a neutral spine, you're going to take those arms nicely above your head. You maintain that stretch for somewhere between 10 and 20 seconds and return. And with all of those stretches, again, we'd advocate that you do three in any one session. And the final thing you might think about is encouraging thoracic rotation, so the twist in the middle back. Again, with the feet placed firmly on the floor, keeping the nose in line with the sternum, you're going to twist to one side, add a little bit of extra stretch, maintain, come back to the middle and repeat to the opposite side. These are a set of simple functional exercises that you can do perhaps on a break or if you've got a long day. All you need is a flat piece of wall. So you lean against the wall like so with your feet just a little way from the wall. Get your pelvis square on the wall and tuck in your lower abdominal so you flatten your lumbar spine and then you do what we call a peel down. So you take your head off the wall and then you flex down as far as comfortable and reverse the motion. That's lumbar flexion. Then the next one is really a modified ski stretch so we're not sitting right down the wall, probably to 45 degrees. And then you contract the thigh muscles and the glutes and you slide back at the wall using your glutes. Another glutes exercise you can do is again standing a little bit further away from the wall, you do what we call a rear facing wall squat where you bend, hinge at the hips and back up again. People often find this difficult if they've got a tight back or dominant back muscles. So you hinge from the hip, sit to the wall and then stand up very much using the glutes. And then finally one that can help balance is that you stand side onto the wall. This is a modified flamingo. So you bend the knee and hip so it's 45 degrees. You lean the elbow into the wall you tighten the glutes on the stance on the supporting leg and you push the knee against the wall until you can feel a reasonable contraction and you'd hold that for about 15 to 20 seconds and that's a really good stabilizing set of muscles for the hips and you do two or three repetitions each side and that will help your balance your stability and help offload your spine shown that many factors contribute to back problems. So invest in time in your body now and it will be really, really well spent.